Hey guys, welcome back to Pristine Reads, and today I'm going to be reviewing The Merchant's Daughter, book number two in the Hagenheim series by Melanie Dickerson. So yes, I did review book number 10 in the series, and I did not review book number two, because if you want to see like the full story, look at all my other videos in this review series. Um, this book came with the second shipment of the series, and, but yeah, weird circumstances. Anyways, so I'm going to review book number two today. Alright, let's get to it. First step is my summary. By the way, this is the super spoiler review. Yep, okay, so The Merchant's Daughter is a retelling of the Beauty and the Beast fairy tale. And it opens with us meeting Annabelle Chapman, the daughter of a wealthy merchant who had died, unfortunately, and left his family with no means of supporting themselves. Annabelle's family is used to the luxurious pampered life. She has two older brothers, Edward and Durand, but Edward is just like plain mean and Durand is like so lazy and whiny. He actually really got on my nerves during the, during the book, even though it wasn't in that many scenes. And Annabelle's mother. So Annabelle's family, when her father died, had been required to work in the fields of the village, Glenfall, where they live but they have always shirked their duties and just been plain lazy and left their duties alone. And their old lord had been turning a blind eye to them and his steward had been taking bribes from them and it's just really messed up. But now they have a new lord as their old lord had died. This new lord's name is Lord Benelf Lee Weiss and he is rumored to have an extremely bad temper, only one eye because his other eyes were with an eye patch and something happened to it and he lost it. And he has a mangled left arm in hand because of a wolf attack he sustained a couple years ago. And his hand never healed quite properly. So this lord comes alone. He has no wife as his old wife has died along with his old child. And this lord will not accept bribes at all. So. Annabelle's mother is forced to appear and answer for their slacking of duties. So Lord Lewis says all their family must go back to working in the fields or Annabelle's mother will send one of her three children to Lord Lewis's house to work as an indentured servant for three years. Annabelle's brothers do not want to go to work in the fields too lazy. So Annabelle's brother Edward comes up with a solution for their problem. He says that Annabelle should marry their village bailiff, and the bailiff's name is Tom Atwater. Weird name, but yeah. Annabelle has no desire to marry the bailiff, as he has made unwelcome advances on her in the past, even if the bailiff can provide for her family again. So Annabelle decides to go to Lord Weiss's house and offer herself as an indentured servant to him. Lord Lee Weiss is surprised that her mother did not send the oldest of her siblings, which would be Edward, but Annabelle volunteered to do it herself. So, he got what he got. So, Lord Lee Weiss puts Annabelle to work in the fields right away, but he soon sees that she is not suitable for hard labor, as she has been, like, getting blisters, getting sick, falling, just stinging nettles, all that sort of thing. And he has seen Bailiff Tom making advances on her as well, even in the fields. He tells the bailiff to stop and brings Annabelle into his house to work there as a house servant. Annabelle is content doing this for a while as she is just has to do like some kitchen work, occasional mending, things like that. But then one day Lord Lee Weiss discovers that she can read Latin and summons her to his quarters every night so she can read some of the Bible to him. They start to form a small connection through that. And despite Lord Lee Weiss's gruff appearances, Annabelle finds that he really has a slightly softer heart underneath. But then, but then one day, Lord Lee Weiss is injured in a fire that happened in their village, and, Annab and Annabelle has to tend to him to help him heal more. And then one day, Annabelle is in the woods at the middle of the night, as she had to go to the party. And when she comes out, she is attacked by Bailiff Tom. And obviously he has wrong intentions toward her as he bruises her wrists and her face. Annabelle tries to stop him with her knife, 
that she has had ever since he has started making advances on her. But the bailiff gains control of that and would have done serious harm to Annabelle if not for her childhood friend, Stephen Blundell. Stephen is crippled in both legs, but he arrived at just the right moment and he picked up a rock, threw it at the bailiff's head and knocked him unconscious. Annabelle is, is of course grateful to Stephen, but they, won't, they worry what will happen to the bailiff. He's not dead, but he's unconscious. And as the bailiff is of a higher standing in the village, it would be like a crime to make him unconscious. And because Anne doesn't want anybody to know, Stephen makes her promise to keep it a secret that he hit the bailiff in the head. So Stephen leaves just in time as Lord Lee Weiss appears on the scene. And Lord Lee Weiss descends to, I mean, Lord Lee Weiss decides to defend Annabelle and sends the bailiff to be in the care of his, of his sister. When the bailiff wakes up, he has lost his memory. All of it's gone. However, when the king's coroner comes to the village previously to investigate the fire that happened to injure Lord Lee Weiss, he now has to investigate the bailiff accident incident thing. However, Lord Lee Weiss wants to protect Annabelle, and, uh, but he doesn't know at the time, Stephen and tries to divert the coroner's attention, but that only happens for a small amount of time. The coroner finds out that it was Stephen who did it, but he chose mercy instead of justice and let Stephen go free as the bailiff is, after all, alive and he slowly regains his memory. Meanwhile, Lord Lee Weiss has found the opportunity to send Annabelle to her dream. And Annabelle has always had this dream of going to an abbey and being able to study the scriptures there. However, when Lord Lee Weiss tells her that he found a way for her to go to the Abbey, she is not so enthusiastic as she would have thought. She now knows that she actually loves Lord Lee Weiss and wants to stay with him, but the mistress of the entire household accompanies Annabelle to the Abbey a day later. However, just when they're about to leave, Annabelle sees an angry mob coming towards the house and Bailiff Tom is at the head of this mob, threatening to accuse Lord Lee Weiss as a sort of bad luck that came to the village of Glenfall because the fire that happened while he was while he was there devastated their entire oat and barley crop, so now they have like nothing to eat for the winter. And of course Bailiff Tom is holding a personal grudge against Lord Lee Weiss because of, you know, his blow to the head, all that. So Annabelle decides to do the right thing. She rushes back to the castle and stands up for Lord Lee Weiss and saves him from the mob. Yeah. So Lord Lee Weiss figures out that Annabelle indeed loves him and he has grown to love her too as well. And they get married. The end. All right, next up is my morals. So first up is Christian belief slash other worldviews. This one didn't carry like a huge Catholic influence and I'm thankful for that as the series tends to be kind of prone to that. There were like some mentions of being absolved and you know, saying, oh, and I quote, holy saints preserve us, end quote, that thing. But there's nothing like doctrinally wrong. Just, yeah, I mean, I'm not crazy about that, but it's not bad. The end of worldviews. Next up is violence. Of course, there was the scene where the bailiff got bashed over the head with a rock, but again, that didn't like result in him being killed or anything. There was also, you know, the mob scene where they like threatened to kill Lord Lee Weiss and burn his house down, but nothing like happened because of that. And yeah, that's pretty much the only violence in the book. Next up is romance. I did not like the way some of the other maid servants in the house, like before they'd all go to bed. They would talk in this like really coarse and how should I put it a moral way about some of the other male servants who worked there and Lord Lee Weiss at one point Annabelle did not participate in this talk but yeah I definitely wasn't a fan of that there was also the mention of um, Lord Lee Weiss's old wife having had an affair with another man and nobody even knew whether their child was actually theirs or his wife and her lovers but yeah that was weird and of course there's the bailiff making all these advances on Annabelle he didn't like hurt her in that way if you know what I mean it was like he bruised her on her wrist and her face but that was it oh yeah there's also this quote 
from my, like a thing that he said um, and I quote come to the woods with me tonight and I'll tell you what a real man is like end quote I definitely wasn't crazy about that either I think that could have been admitted but I think that was used to show how evil the bailiff was there was also another servant kind of like a subplot in the story there's also this servant named Gilbert Carpenter um, he, he had a little boy named Adam, but his wife died, and one day Adam finds Annabelle and decides that she would make a perfect wife for his father. So he brings them to meet, and like, it's awkward. And Gilbert tried to ask Annabelle to marry him, but she didn't want to, obviously. She declined. But yeah, nothing really happened between them there. But yeah, alright, that's it for romance. Next up is alcohol. Um... There's a mention of a couple guys being drunk. Pretty much no detail in that. Yeah, that's it. Next up is my rating recommended age level. I'm gonna rate this one four stars. It definitely wasn't my favorite in the series. I think some of the things could have been omitted. You know, those things I mentioned in the romance section. And then also, this is just me, but I think, you know, since this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, then there should have been like more gradual transformation on Lord Lee Weiss's part. I felt like it was kind of abrupt and I think Annabelle should have had like a slightly bigger role in helping with that. But yeah, again, that's just me. I'm gonna put the age level at 14 to 15 plus. Again, because of those things I said in the romance level. And yeah, I just, it was like a slightly slower storyline. And yeah, it wasn't my favorite, but it was still good nonetheless. Great, clean romance to read, nice, quick, easy teen read. Yeah, that's it for today, guys. Oh yeah, links to this book in the description below. And yeah, bye guys. How did the fire start, she said. Fire? What fire? Where's the fire? Someone call the fire department! Call my I don't know, but our entire barley and oat crop is gone, I'm sorry to say. Wait, what do you mean there's no barley and oats? Are those food? Does that mean we have no more food? I thought the guy, the guy over there said there's plenty of food in the kitchen. These people are mad. Which one is telling the truth? Is there really a fire? Come on, people, be honest. It is a tragedy especially because of the severity of this drought. Drought? What drought? But that means we can't grow any more food! We're gonna starve! <sighs> I feel faint. Woe is me! We're gonna starve! <laughs> by God's grace, we still have the wheat supply in the smaller barn. The wheat by rights belonged exclusively to him but he couldn't let the villagers starve. He resolved to buy enough barley and oats to last the village through the winter. Wait, did this guy just say he owns all the food left? What if he's not nice and he doesn't give any to me? Then there'll be none left. Oh wait, but he said that he's gonna buy more for all of us. Yay, we're not gonna starve. Fell down. Oh, gotta go get them now.